the entrance of heaven. You have redeemed us, Lord, by your blood from every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us into a kingdom, priests for our God. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Those are the words of Jesus as he prepares his disciples for his passion on Holy Thursday. So let's not be troubled to believe, for the Lord has taken away the sins of the world. And so as we once again participate in his uh, sacrificial love for us, let's now once again call to mind our sins as we celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of our freedom and our, of our salvation, listen to the voice of our pleading and grant that those you have redeemed by the shedding of your son's blood may have life through you and under your protection rejoice forever unharmed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul and his companions reached Antioch, they went to the synagogue. Paul was invited to address the people, so he stood up and began to speak. My brothers, you descendants of Abraham's family and others who fear God, to us the message of this salvation has been sent. Because the residents of Jerusalem and their leaders did not recognize Jesus or understand the words of the prophets that are, ready, that are read every Sabbath. They fulfilled those words by condemning him. Even though they found no cause for a sentence of death, they asked Pilate to have him killed. When they had carried out everything that was written about him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. And for many days he appeared to those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. And they are now his witnesses to the people. And we bring you the good news that what God promised to our ancestors, he has fulfilled for us, their children, by raising Jesus. As also it is written in the second psalm, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are my son. This day I have begotten you. You are my son. This day I have begotten you. I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Now therefore, O kings, be wise, be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and with trembling. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. During the supper, he said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. You know the way to the place where I am going. Lord, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Because of the self-isolation, many of us are viewing uh, TV shows and movies on, on a streaming basis. However, in terms of the movies I like watching, I always like getting the DVD versions because not only do they have the movie itself, but also the featurettes, the documentaries. Like how did the producers, directors create this movie? And so it's always not only, you know, what happened, but how it happened. Now, one of the great privileges of, of, my, uh, of, of my life is having followed the footsteps of St. Paul. And so uh, two years ago, to celebrate my 10th anniversary of my priesthood, I'm going to do a little bit of a, uh, a honeymoon. And so with a, a, a few others to, to have gone to places like Philippi, Corinth, Thessalonica, Patmos, where the book of Revelation was written, and even Ephesus. And to visit these sites that 2,000 years ago, St. Paul walked, and how he was able to bring the gospel into the circumstances of his time. And so for me to have encountered the story in a physical way and now to, to, to kind of read the background, it, it's a marvelous um, story. And I mean, not in the story that, okay, that happened, okay, done. No, it, it's a reminder for us that we are participants in this story of salvation. So how everything began in terms of Paul's first of the three missionary journeys is entering into mystery, saying, okay, I am a participant in this salvation story, a character in it. And so uh, a few days ago, at the beginning of Acts chapter 13, that Paul says that he and his companions were in Antioch in, um, near Jerusalem, and they were worshiping the Lord and fasting. What happens next? The Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work that I've called them. Yike. I mean, many of us want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, but really under our constraints. But this is where we see how Paul and Barnabas allowed the story of salvation to permeate in them. In the past few days, we've been reading about Paul and uh, Paul's preaching of the, in the synagogue in Pisidia and how he's revealing, okay, salvation history, how everything began and how the Lord has kind of brought all things to our Savior and how the, the Lord has saved his people. And so the people are astounded as we continue reading Acts chapter 13. And so Paul continues to preach. And there's always a kink because, okay, the Jewish people are fond. Okay, the Lord has brought salvation to us. But the Gentiles are also receiving it. But they're not worthy. They are not people of the circumcision. They are not people of the dietary laws. And so there's growing animosity. And so as the story continues, uh, the people of, of Pisidia stone Paul and Barnabas. And so they continue on this journey. And so they can, I think at Lystra that they become, that they're uh, stoned by the people again, by the Jewish people. That it's like, doesn't the story get easy to tell and easy to be accepted? And I believe also in Acts chapter 14 that Paul will confide to the people either in Derbe or Iconium that in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven, one must undergo many trials. Yike. Isn't the story of salvation supposed to be easy? No. Because especially in Luke's gospel, when, when 
Uh, Jesus, you must take up your cross daily and follow me. And I think for us to be humbled enough to say, Lord, thy will be done. Let your Holy Spirit truly guide me. Let the Holy Spirit seek to bring me as a participant in the salvation history. And I think as we, if, if anyone wants to bring the good news of salvation to other people, just have them read Acts of the Apostles, which really should be called Acts of the Holy Spirit. Because when Jesus sends into heaven, he says, before that, you will be witnesses of my love in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. And you will be clothed with power from the Holy Spirit. And you will be witnesses. And Lord ascends like, what in the world do we do next? And so for nine days, they wait. And I think what I want to offer to all of you watching is each one of us is a participant in salvation history. We know what happens at the end. The Lord comes back to bring salvation to all people who've chosen to follow him. It's what happens now until the end that's a part of the drama. And so there's no need to watch streaming TV shows or movies or DVDs. We are participants. And how do we freely participate? As Paul and Barnabas and uh, the community in Niger, when the Holy Spirit spoke to them, they worshiped God, they, they uh, proclaimed his name, and they fasted. And I think that this time in which what I call the Great Reset is an opportunity for us to once again invite the Lord into our lives in a profound way. To truly pray, Lord, thy will be done. Let it be done to me according to thy word as we pray uh, the words of Mary at the, at the Annunciation. To allow ourselves to freely be participants, not to uh, hinder the proclamation of the gospel, the, to be witnesses, but to say, Lord, thy will be done. And so for many of you who are suffering physically, emotionally, financially, may say, I don't want any part of this story. And pre please, offer this sacrifice to God and say, Lord, I am suffering. I think you heed the words of Acts chapter 14, that one must suffer much for the sake of the kingdom of God, to offer your sacrifice, your sufferings to the Lord and say, Lord, I trust in you. The words of St. Faustina and Divine Mercy, I trust in you. Because we know what happens at the end of salvation history. The Lord has saved his people. It's how. And I think to, to continue to say, come Holy Spirit, enkindle us the fire of love. Renew us, recreate us to be participants in the salvation history. In fact, in the moments after receiving Holy Communion, there's a period of silence. And I always say, Lord, you know, send forth a new Pentecost upon this church. I'm pastor, I'm responsible for thousands of people. And I can't guide everybody, but the Holy Spirit can. That the Holy Spirit would come down upon us because in, Acts, in John chapter 14, as we continue reading, Jesus says that the Holy Spirit will guide you into all the truth. He will remind you of all that I've taught you. Again, to invoke the Holy Spirit. So the story is not done, salvation history. We are participants. And so let's continue to be inspired by the words of the Acts of the Apostles, the very life of Paul, Barnabas, and the members of the early church who were confounded by the sufferings of danger and yet trusted in God. So let's trust in God so we could be participants in the story of salvation and be witnesses to others that they too can be participants in the very life and love of God. The Lord is near us. So let us invoke his name upon all our needs and intentions. For Pope Francis and Bishop McGratton, and for all those who shepherd the church, and all those who lead us in faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For leaders of nations, may the Lord endow with gifts of good governance and leadership so that they, their efforts may be directed to seek the common good on their nations and the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. For all who have wandered far from the fall, that they may hear the voice of the Good Shepherd and be open to responding in hope and wonder. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those affected by the COVID-19 May the recent Christ visit them with healing power and new hope. 
for healthcare workers and first responders, for all who, ha who are unable to stay at home, but must work to provide for their families. May God continue to protect them and keep them in good health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they live forever with Christ in the glory of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring to you all these prayers and we ask you to grant them in the name of Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. My brothers, my sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, good and the good of all his holy, holy church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread of giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Antiphon. Christ our Lord was handed over for our transgressions and was raised again for our justification. Alleluia. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in your resurrection 
who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So thank you very much for participating in this uh, virtual Mass. And so I invite you to please keep uh, the needs of, uh, of everyone at St. Michael's that we may particularly come together, not only virtually but physically, to worship our Lord in spirit and truth, in His Word and in the Eucharist. So please, nonetheless, submit your prayer intentions. Visit stmichael.ca. And also, if you're able to contribute financially, that really goes a long way to ensuring that the church is ready to receive everyone to worship our, our God in a physical way. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.